The reason this stuff all works is because of this formula right here, what we call the value-price relationship. When you, it's simple. When you bring this much value to your relationships, price of doing business with you is a big deal. When you bring this much value to your relationships, price of doing business with you is not such a big deal. Let me illustrate it this way. Is there anyone in the room engaged to be married? Raise your, I won't embarrass you. Raise your hand if you're just engaged. Raise your hands. Let me see them. Up, 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 up in the air. I know there's a couple. Okay, stand up for a sec. Just, I won't embarrass you. Stand up for a sec. Come on, stand up, stand up. Now, you're going to have to talk loud for me. What's your name? What is it? Monique? Monique. Okay, I can say that, Monique. Monique, what's your fiancé's name? Jim. How long have you known Jim for, Monique? Two years. Now, did Jim propose to you, Monique, or did you propose to him? He proposed. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> have you set a date? Have you guys set a date? Not yet. Okay, non-committal bastard. Okay. No, it's a... <laughs> No, so, so you guys propose and you got a date set. Now, let's say that you met Jim, Monique, on the first date, all right? If he'd have, on the first date, if he'd have proposed to you, would you have said yes? Six months into it, would you have said yes? One year into it, would you have said yes? Once the baby starts to show, though, you pretty much got to do something, right? I mean, okay. But, oh, oh, stop. Eight, 18 months into it, though, you'd say yes, right? So you must have recently just said yes then, right? All right. All that happened... When you first met Jim, when he first met you, the reason you weren't going to do this deal, Monique, is that the value that he brought to your relationship was really small. <laughs> Don't go there. Therefore, therefore, Monique, the price of an engagement relationship was way too big. There's no way this was going to happen, right? But over the next six months, nine months, 12 months, 18 months, Monique, as, he, as Jim starts making deposits into the relationship bank account, <laughs> behave... The seminar is rated for mature audiences only. <laughs> the value expands dramatically, and the price of commitment is not a big deal, and you decide to get married. Would you agree? That's what happened. Okay, seven years go by, Monique, seven years, hypothetically. You put the ring on Jim's finger, it was like pulling a ripcord to an inflatable raft. He just <laughs> explodes. He, come, he, he, he he come home every day at lunchtime. He starts his first six-pack. He puts on some Jerry Springer reruns. All right? make some sounds you find only up in Muskoka, you know, you're, you're freaking out going, I should have listened to Mama on this one. And, and what do we do 56% of the time? What occurs 56% of the time? 56% of the time we divorce. 56% of the time. 56% of the time, the most powerful customer-vendor relationship explodes. 56% of the time, the most powerful strategic alliance in the planet goes kaboom. Does that mean then that 44% of us are happily elated with the deal we made? <laughs> Don't raise your hands on this one. <laughs> How many are staying together out of economic convenience because of the children? Or there's no other vendors out there right now. <laughs> Over time, we take our relationships for what? For granted. And if we do that to the most significant ones, guess what we do to the ones that really don't matter as much, aren't as significant? Give it up for Monique. Thank you. Thank you. You come see me afterwards. I got a present for you, okay? Thank you, Monique. Thank you. You too, Bob. All right. That's, the marketplace has got a point system. We've got to figure out what the point system is, which means we have to ask them, and we've got to deliver value the way that they define it. And if you assume wrong, your results will be devastating. I'm going to give you an example of this. I write about this stuff, I teach this stuff, and I blow it. And when I, I'll give you an example of how I blow it. And if I blow it, guess what? I've got some friends. Ever have customers divorce you? Ever have customers divorce you? It's because of this system here. You see, we wine them, and we dine them, and we land them, and then we forget about them. You can't do that. I talked to a buddy of mine. I said, how hey, you got married five years ago? I said, hey, how's it going? He goes, she left me. What, what do you mean she left me? What happened? He says, I don't know. He says, I told her on the day I married her, honey, I love you. When it changes, I'll let you know. <laughs> no. They got to be told on a regular basis. They need roses on a frequent basis. They need frequent touches. They need to know that you still love them. Let me give you an example how I've assumed wrong. We were celebrating an anniversary. It was our 16th anniversary. And Diane, you're close, so I'll, I'll pick on you just for a moment, all right? And you can be her for a moment. And she needed a new watch, and she was an accountant. And she put her career on hold when we started having babies. And I wanted to honor that, and I wanted to buy her a very expensive watch, a Rolex watch. So I made payments on this. I couldn't wait to give it to her. And you know at Christmas time when you're a kid how jacked up you get? But now as a grown-up, you get underwear, you get socks, and 
sucks, right? But anyway, big day comes, and it's in August, and I go, honey, happy birthday, happy anniversary for the next 10 years. And, and, now, whenever I gave her anything of significance, Diane, anything of value, anything that would, you know, she'd find a value, she'd leap out of her chair and give me a huge hug and kiss with great enthusiasm. It didn't work at home, actually, either. But anyway, so she, she goes, wow, what could this be? And she peels the wrapping back and goes, sees the little Rolex insignia and goes, it's a Rolex. Oh, yes, it is. She goes, I hate Rolexes. But I thought you wanted a watch. She says, I do. I want one of those Timex watchmen. It's got a secondhand stopwatch. I can time eggs. She goes, you look disappointed. Duh. Did you buy it for you or did you buy it for me? Hands it back. She didn't even open it. She said, take it back. I took it back. But I got a beautiful new motorcycle. <laughs> Rolex watch, one point. I know this stuff. I teach this stuff and I blow it. And if I blow it, guess what? I'll show you the converse of this. I'm in Vancouver. I go walking past this store in a mall, had the afternoon off, and what caught my attention was a big ceramic store. You know where you can do pottery and ceramics and stuff? And there's a woman in the window. And there she is in this window, and music's coming through the glass. And there she is sculpting something, and you can see the wet clay streaming through her fingers. Anyone see the movie Ghost? I'm having this fantasy, right? And, and she was in her late 70s, but... I was lonely, and, and I went in and I said, can you teach me how to make something? She said, sure. And we made a serving platter and a dipping bowl, $38 in parts, half a day's worth of labor, gave it to her for Mother's Day, and guess what? She cried. 50 points. <laughs> your customers have a point system. That's why you have your CRM initiatives. You've got to find out what they are. You've got to record that, and you've got to market to us one-to-one. You've got to deliver value one-to-one, and don't assume what one values another one does as well. We all value things differently, and you're only a mouse click away from making that determination. You become the point of determination. You become the reason.